everyone, and welcome back to the Horror Inside podcast with Brandy and Dylan. And today we have a couple of really, really special guests. We have Joe White and Heidi Anderson Swan. Uh, they are the voices of Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine in the greatest Resident Evil game of all time. That's not a disputable, that's a fact. Yeah, that is. <laughs> the a <fact>. RE remake. <laughs> uh, so Heidi will be uh, joining us shortly. Um, yes. But first, we wanted to talk one with Joe for a little bit. Hi, Joe. Thanks for hey. doing this. Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we both really, really appreciate it. Um, can't emphasize that enough. You're awesome for coming on and oh, thank talking you. Talking about a game from 2002 that people still love and resonate with after yeah. all this time. Isn't that just that just blows my mind for for uh, for for something um, you know be- before the the thing got resurrected sort of you know it was out it was a huge thing and uh it kind of went away for a while and i hadn't thought about it for years i d- it was just something that i did right um and um then out of the blue <laughs> a, a, a few years ago i get this phone call i'm at lunch and i get this phone call from uh from paul freshwater i, I think you know paul yes oh, we do yeah yeah He's and awesome. You know, saying, "Hey, yeah, I'm I'm this guy in England, and I, I run this Resident Evil website, and wouldn't it be fun if if we you know if we had you come on and and talk about this?" I'm like, "Oh, Resident, oh yeah, Resident Evil, oh that's like 20 years ago." And so it's fantastic, it's fantastic to me that there is uh, you know new interest in this being generated. I I guess it's not new interest; people have been following it all all along, but I just wasn't aware of it. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. I know. Um, in those in those 20 years. Uh, Brandy and I have probably played remake hundred times. Oh my god, yeah, I, I've lost count. It's <laughs> oh my god, like I could probably play the game like with my eyes closed at this point. I love that game so much. And it's like when you grow up, it's it's just crazy because I don't. I mean, I think the series because it's still going on. It's obviously generating new fans, but yeah, the fans like us that like grew up with specifically the remake and just all those games. Oh my god, it's just wow. They don't make games like they used to. <laughs> they, they really don't, and I, I think I think that's a shame. Yeah, because, I agree. Um, they've I think that they've you know a lot of the games have they're cool, they yeah. look fantastic, but they just don't have the the sort of raw soul yes. that some yes. of the other games have. You know that there's there was just a uh, there was a rawness to it, um, a an unsophisticated quality that. It enhanced the uh, the horror aspect of it. You know, you're yes. really into these games. I remember the first time I played uh, Resident Evil after I did the voiceover for it. I wasn't even a gamer. I you know, <laughs> never played video games, and then so I picked up the game because I had done the voice on it and wanted to see what it sounded like. So I started playing it, and I was just it, it sucked me into the genre. Uh, yes, and it. It still is a great pleasure for me to go back and play the game now. And I've got to tell you the truth. This is a, a kind of a, an embarrassing thing to admit. <laughs> Up until about a year and a half ago, I had never played as Jill. Oh, oh. really? And oh, I, Heidi needs to hear that. that. <laughs> and, yeah, and, you know, it's, and I feel so bad because I just always got on the game and I did the first thing that comes up, which is Chris Redfield. and. Mm-hmm. Right. And I uh, never thought about it. And then I thought, oh, you know what? I've never done this. And I had the best time. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Oh, my gosh. Well, I mean, I guess it's natural because you played Chris, too, to just be like, well, you know, go through Chris's story. Both stories are great. Like, it, it's just such a – and I, to this day, that game holds up so well. Just graphically, it looks – it's such it really a beautiful, does. polished – yes. it's. I, oh, my God. Like, I know. it looks better than some games made today. A lot of people right. have said that. I fully agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it was a trend, uh, you know, we, we've been through the trend of, uh, the, you know, the 8-bit trend where uh, a lot of game companies were going back and uh, looking for that uh, that super basic quality of, of video games like Minecraft and, you know, yes. uh, sort of revisiting the uh, the 8-bit age. Yeah. Um, and so you've got those games and there are a lot of those out there right now and, and some of them are interesting. Uh, I don't... I don't like a lot of them. I mean, not, not right. that I like them. I, they, a lot of them just don't have any interest for me. Right. Um, uh, and then you've got the super hyper real games, which um, are wonderful as well. I mean, like uh, Last of Us. I really enjoy Oh, them. yes. Yes. God, That's I love Last of Us. I'm a little worried about the new one because it looks a little too slick. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The, 
I'm like, oh, okay. I, if, the story, <laughs> if the story holds up. And that's what it all goes back to for me the is – is the story good, right? Yes. yes. No, that's exactly why Dylan and I love Resident Evil. The character, it wasn't just like, oh, this is a good horror game. It's like we got, like, you know, I got sucked into the story, the characters, you know, Wesker, the, you know, the betraying <laughs> guy, and then, you know, Chris, the badass, and Jill, bad. Like, it's just like, and Barry, who's just great. Everybody loves Barry. So it's <laughs> like, it's like, it wasn't just like, oh, this is a good horror game. It's like, wow, these characters really mean something to people. Like, they really. Like and and you and and Heidi specifically voicing them that just brought them to life in in remake remake is like the perfect there's I can't say anything like there's nothing wrong with it remake is a perfect <laughs> game it is the perfect game. <laughs> um, you know I feel the same way I really do I, I I don't when I play that game I really don't notice any uh, anything that I would you know that I would change um, yes it, right I mean story voice graphics well, everything for. <laughs> There's one error that we found that's hilarious. Really? Um, well, it's funny in that, um, like, when Chris and Wesker are fighting Lisa, Wesker can get knocked oh. off and killed. And oh. then at the end of the game, he's, he's still there, there at the no end, and nobody anything. acknowledges that he was just killed, a ha like, a half an hour ago. <laughs> that's one little thing. But... One, the only thing. Um, uh, we, you know, the Lord of Light brought him back to life. Yeah. There you go. There we go. He's, I mean, yeah. he's super badass and immortal anyway he'll probably end up coming back eventually they say probably. they killed him off but probably not <laughs> um well that actually eliminates one of our questions then joe because we actually were both curious if you ever had played the remake um or any of the other resident evil games so i guess you already answered the remake question but have you ever played any of the other games in the franchise oh i've played all of them oh you that's have all, that's awesome, awesome. <laughs> I've totally played them all after i got into uh, after i got sucked into the swirling vortex that is that was remake uh <laughs> I basically went out and bought, you know, I, I've purchased every game since then. Uh, that is so I um, really enjoy Resident Evil 7. Oh. It's, it's a fantastic game. Um, it's, yeah. it's, I feel like it's a totally different storyline. I don't, yes. I don't, you know, it doesn't really have um, the connection to the original canon. Um, right. But right. a standalone experience, I had a lot of fun playing it. That's awesome. Uh, Interesting. That's awesome because, uh, you know, that's really cool to hear because most people um, who are like in Resident Evil as voices or just most games in general, a lot of them don't play them, which is yes. fine if you don't <laughs> play games. But that's really yeah. cool to hear that you played yeah, all of them. You know, I think I'm different in, in that I also work in that industry. You know, I've, I've right. worked in the animation industry as an artist for 25 years. Oh, so hilarious. I'm also, you know, I, I am a 3D modeler. I do texturing. I, you know, I have done a lot of uh, uh, voice processing for video games. Um, so I, I kind of live in that world, and I don't think a lot of other voice actors do. Most of the other voice actors are just actors. They That's what they do. Right. For right. Wow. Uh, well, then do, I have to ask then, uh, besides Remake, um, and you did talk a little bit about Seven, but do you have like another favorite or another game in the franchise that sort of stands out? Yeah, I would say, um, see, I really enjoyed Zero. Oh, I love that one, too. Oh, oh. yeah. We just finished <laughs> playing that. Yeah. <laughs> I think Four. I think oh, four yes. Is Thank you, Joe. <laughs> four is great uh, for many reasons, and a lot of people agree with that. It's, it's you know, undeniably a, a, an amazing game. Um, but some fans, you know, because it changed up the the – style a little bit some fans kind of are like meh with four but i personally love four i always have a, like so much fun when i play it oh absolutely yeah I, I you know i haven't actually played that in a couple of years i'm gonna drag it out and replay it <laughs> replay it <laughs> <laughs> so well, well dylan do you have i mean I, do, we we're gonna go back and forth but we kind of just right got into a conversation but if you want to ask the next question sure <laughs> well i was wondering how um how did you get the role with Chris? Like, how did that whole thing work out? Well, this is this is uh, gonna surprise you, and uh, <laughs> okay. it, it, this it, because it it didn't happen any sort of uh, traditional way. I didn't audition for the part. I um, at the at the time it was being recorded um, that, that they were remaking Resident Evil. They were doing the sound for it at uh, a studio in Hollywood called Sound Deluxe, mm -hmm. and. My wife was the office manager at Sound Deluxe. So I went in there quite often, you know, just to visit her. We were both working in Hollywood, so I would we'd get lunch together or whatnot. And 
So I was in there one day, and uh, I I was an actor at the time, uh, not like I you know had never done any acting. Mm. Uh, but um, so I'm in there, and Carol Rougier, who was the casting person uh, on the thing, was there, and they were talking about they're looking for the person to to um, replace the original voiceover in Resident Evil. Um, I forget that guy's name, but he he never did anything again. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not saying I'm not trying to to pull him down. I'm just saying, right, right. If you look for the guy's name and you can't find him anywhere. I don't know if right. he if he continued being an actor or if he just quit and did something else. Or, um, but uh, so I happened to be in the office that day, and they and they said, hey, uh, you know, my wife and Carol were talking, and they said, hey, Joe, do you think you can match this voice? Listen to this is the original voice. Listen to how you know, the, the quality of this guy's voice. Do you think you can match that? And so I went in the booth and I, I did a couple of takes and they said, yeah, you know, you really sound like this guy. Would you like to be um, this character in a, in a video game? I had to, I didn't know what Resident Evil was. I didn't know. Oh, what wow. Was. And I said, <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> had no idea that it was going to be this, you know, this big popular game. <laughs> so I went in and they, they, uh, they let me listen to, the old voice. And uh, so I did a few of the lines and tried to match uh, the way they were done previously. Mm -hmm. And after a while, you know, after doing a bunch of different takes and trying a bunch of different things and Carol saying, Joe, try this, try that. And the, the, uh, the director was there and he would say, he would, you know, suggest things to Carol. After a while, they said, uh, look, you know, we really like what you're doing naturally. Stop um, voice matching the original one and just do wow. what you feel uh, this character should be. That's so awesome. That's when it kind of became mine. And, and, uh, then I ended up doing, I think we did a total of six or seven recording sessions for the entire game. And those are, so those are four hour sessions. When you do voiceover, um, the longest session that you can do by union rules is four hours. They won't let you do voiceover longer than that. Cause you'll hurt yourself. Wow. Um, so I think we did six or seven four-hour sessions to, to get all of the dialogue for the for the game. And that was it. And I walked away. I think <laughs> at the time, <laughs> I, I think my my paycheck for the entire gig, I probably shouldn't be saying this, <laughs> I think I made $1,500 off of it. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's, what? <laughs> and then, yeah, and then you – because – that's how video games work. You didn't get anything like residually no, from re-releases. I know that's that's awful. There's no residuals. There's no. <laughs> so it was it was something that I really forgot about for a long time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then did they just because you also voiced uh, Richard? Did they just were they just like okay, we need this other voice? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're oh yeah. <laughs> Can you change your voice slightly? <laughs> you make, your, make your voice sound more pained. Oh I mean, if you listen to Richard, it's like, Chris, yeah. oh, I oh, I've been, I was bitten by a big snake. <laughs> it, he's such a pathetic little character. I love that. <laughs> I, no, I think you did an awesome job, Joe, because honestly, like, for so long, I've played that game so many times for so many years, I had no idea it was the same, like, it, it was you. Like, so <laughs> I think you did an awesome job. <laughs> That's oh, really <laughs> no, definitely. Well, but he definitely, Richard did get his awesome moments when he jumps into the room and helps Jill and aims oh, a shotgun and it's payback snake. time. He yeah. does get. <laughs> yeah. And then he just gets eaten. But and then he, yeah. <laughs> um. Or Richard. Oh, Richard. I know. And no matter what you do, he always dies. Like no matter storyline you're playing, you can't save him. It's sad, but. <laughs> well, it's good. They gave him a little more screen time and remake. In the original, he'll just die yeah. as soon as you get back with the serum, which is kind of lame. Yeah, kind of sad. Um, well, that actually leads me to my next question. Um, so, you said, Joe, you said you had never heard of the franchise prior to having the. You didn't know like what Resident Evil was, correct? No, no, had no idea. I was wow. not a gamer until then. That is so oh, awesome, though. Oh, I love that being in the game sort of made you become a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. That's true. Uh, um, I, I got deeply into uh, gaming after that. And um, because also at the same time, uh, during, uh, when was it, 98, 99, maybe 2000, 
I did a bunch of voiceovers for EverQuest 2. Mm. I did like 40 different characters in that game. Wow. <laughs> Everything from, you know, from guards. Uh, they're all NPC characters. Um, all of the guards in the cities and uh, vampires and, uh, and just wow. all kinds of crazy, crazy voices. That's really, That's really cool. So, so that got me even deeper. That got me into playing Ever EverQuest, which led to me playing uh, Warcraft, which I still play. Of course. Uh, yeah. Well, so had you ever played the original game? Have you, no. like, since... Oh, you've never played it? I never have. I've, I've seen uh, cuts from it on YouTube. Right. Uh, you know, people just post some stuff, and uh, but I have not actually played the game. Oh, oh it's well, such a... Sorry. Yeah, it's such a tr it's such a trip. The voice acting just is is yes. the best in the worst possible way, and it's yeah, hilarious. It's like famously Makes the whole bad. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Was, didn't it? It won a Guinness Book of World Record for worst yeah. voice acting. Are you serious? Oh, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> that's oh, fantastic. That's where you know, I think lines come from. <laughs> and you know, um, back before video games started becoming so sophisticated, a lot of the voices were just done by the the artists working on the game you know they, they never wow. even hired voiceover people they would just do it themselves that's really interesting but that's why so, a lot of those early voiceovers are kind of cheesy <laughs> <laughs> well resident evil one definitely takes the cake for that i mean i that's definitely why like i think like they wanted to remake it and obviously with the remake you're in it you can take it a lot more serious than i mean the original is great it, it's it's definitely um you know, it's 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 cheesy and it's bad, but that's what makes it great. So you should Absolutely. definitely play it just for that alone. <laughs> no, there's there's definitely a, a nostalgic factor to that. And, exactly. You know, I don't by saying that I just walked in and, and got the part um, without understanding. I I don't want people to think I wasn't an actor at the time. I was. Right. Uh, doing a lot of stage work, um, working in musicals and uh, doing on camera stuff as well. So it wasn't like they had a non actor come in and do the, do the part. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And they offered me the part, but. Perfect. Perfect. So. I'm so glad you were there that day. <laughs> I right. got the part. <laughs> <laughs> because it's made me, you know, very rich. And. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Well, rich in that you have tons of people that, Exactly. You know, love you yeah. <laughs> and want to talk to you and take time to talk to you. So <laughs> it's an amazing thing to me as well. It really is, and I really appreciate it. So thank you guys for having me on. This is so cool. No, thank oh, no you. Problem. Oh my god. And you still sound I mean, obviously you sound just like Chris, so it's like I close my eyes and I'm talking to Chris Redfield. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> well, uh, get... I'll do my best to to <laughs> I know <laughs> you as we're talking, as we're talking, I can I can hear Chris in my head yelling yeah. at Wesker and saying, you know, you kill him with your own dirty hair. Dirty hair, yeah, that's my favorite line. <laughs> <laughs> you said you son of a bitch. He like gets real mad at him. I love it. Oh my gosh. I was curious about, um, because for us he's the godfather of Resident Evil. Mm. Um, I was curious because he directed that one. Yes. Your experiences, uh, interactions, whatever that might have been with Shinji Mikami because Brandy and I always talk about we've sort of boiled it down to this is what make this is why we love Resident Evil Shinji is like the soul and voice actors like you and Heidi and a lot of them are like the heart of Resident Evil and that's what makes it so amazing yes. but like what was your experiences working with Shinji uh limited um I oh. say because there was uh there was a very very strong language barrier. Um, right. Oh, right. English. So basically, I would be in the booth, and Carol Rougier would be sitting in the in the um, in the studio, in the booth with um, I mean, in the control room with Shinji and another gentleman. Actually, there were a couple of other gentlemen who I don't remember their names. Uh, and they would talk together, and then Carol would direct me. Mm. because she could take the broken English that, that she, you know, she was given the direction in broken English and she would interpret it and, uh, and tell me what to do in the booth. So she really kind of was the proxy director of the whole thing. Oh, that's cool. We should, mm -hmm. um, should know her name more than I'm sure she's in the credits right. somewhere. She, yeah, right. obviously. It's C it, yeah. It's uh, Carol C A R O L E Rougier mm. R U G G I E R. Um, and uh, yeah, we're still friends. We're we're uh, oh, still oh, that's awesome. so cool. Yeah. 
she's a very cool person. And she's an actress in her own right. You know, she's done a whole bunch of work. Wow. So, yeah, look her up. Well, she definitely directed or, you know, <laughs> yeah. voice directed no, one she, of the greatest video games. So, <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah, I don't, I, she might be willing to, uh, to come on the podcast if you wanted to talk to her about <gasps> her experience. Oh, cool. that would Ooh. Yeah, that would be very interesting. <laughs> definitely. That would be. I would definitely have questions for her because she, I wonder if she remembers, you know, Shinji and any of the Capcom people specifically. That's really, really cool. You know, I'd <laughs> like to talk to her about that because uh, some of my memories of the time uh, are a little fuzzy and I don't remember a lot of the people involved. So she right. might know more of that information. <laughs> that's really cool. We're going to have to look for her name next time, Dylan, when we, when we play that. That's the remake. <laughs> um,. Well, I guess, well, we had a lot of questions, but we kind of answered, you, you kind of answered them all with like, you know, playing the games. <laughs> oh, I do have a fun one. Um, do you have a favorite character besides Chris, obviously? And do you have a least favorite character in the whole series? <laughs> hmm. hmm. Boy, that's a tough one. Well, I should have, I should have thought of this before the podcast. Uh, a favorite character, a favorite character. I have to say, uh, probably the character that I... Uh, that I like the least, not in terms of um, the quality of the character, but just in terms of uh, who the character is, is that little shit from from <laughs> Resident Evil 4. That oh, little guy, aw- Salazar? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> he's just the worst snotty little brat. Oh, he, is, he is. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a good choice. I didn't, I didn't think he'd pick, like, <laughs> that screen. Yeah, he's he's pretty awful. Um <laughs> Oh, well, you, you, you said that snotty little whatever. I first thought of Ashley. Sorry, I don't like <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> Ashley is kind of annoying. Yeah. <laughs> she's, um, she's what we call high maintenance. She yes. is. <laughs> uh, escort missions are always annoying anyway, but. <laughs> Sorry? See, like, escort missions, like when you do any type oh, yeah. of escort mission, they're always annoying. But like with Ashley, I just feel like they went beyond Be, they made her so annoying like if you have to catch her when you jump off a ladder come on i know <laughs> she doesn't know how to climb down ladders <laughs> um so and you don't have a favorite then joe besides you can't pick chris that's like a cop-out <laughs> right right of course well, uh, i'm scanning scanning trying to think of uh who else really stood out um I'll have to get back to you with that one. Okay. Right. okay. Think about it. There are, have, there's a uh, lot. Yeah, that's the thing. There's there's a huge canon. Yes. Uh, well, oh, we can... another character that I really hate is in RE7. Is oh. the, uh, the the snotty um, reporter guy at the beginning, the one that gets killed. Oh yeah. Uh, he's a, he's a real jerk. <laughs> <laughs> he deserves he deserves to die. He deserves to die. <laughs> Yeah, I had a pretty interesting, I mean, I think it's interesting because it's about, you know, character and backstory. Mm-hmm. You know, post, you know, RE1, the remake, um, Claire Redfield became very important, uh, Chris's yeah. sister. Sure. I'm curious if when you were recording remake, if they ever gave you any information on his, like, backstory, that he had a sister, his parents also died in a car crash, but I'm specifically wondering about Claire, if they told you anything about that, Um, because I always thought the way Chris and the way you delivered his lines dealing with Rebecca always seemed like like a big brother relationship, and I was curious if they gave you any info on Claire to sort of help that. You know, I I, I hope... um... I hope I don't uh, burst any bubbles by by saying this, but uh, no, oh. there there <laughs> there was uh, there there was no character prep at all. It was um, at the time uh, there was it, it one of the things that I walked away from the experience not very impressed uh, mm-hmm. by how it went down. Um, was because it really it wasn't a it wasn't a big thing at all. It was really kind of a um, you know I'd go in the studio and you know there was no you know, hoopla at all about doing it. It was just kind of like oh, show up, go in the booth, and the guys would be in the booth and Carol would be in the booth and they'd say okay here's the next line and we would just kind of do it and then that was it. Um, <laughs> there was really no prep and you know I've talked about my take on Chris Redfield was strictly based on my own uh, 
sort of you know the work that you do as an actor is you come up with with reasons for the character being the way that they are hmm. and uh, during the course of the of the of the recordings i came up with uh the idea that this was a real guy that you know, that's how i started skewing chris toward less of a hero i didn't want chris to be a hero i wanted chris to be a real guy in a in a hmm. horrible situation yes and uh so that's that was where Chris's voice came from, was just from my own imagining of that situation. Uh, well, that's yeah. a little that's a little disappointing. I feel like games today, they they de- I mean they definitely would have given actors so. like like backstory, yeah, backstory. Because I feel like that would be helpful. I mean, yeah. you did a great well, job course. with nothing, Absolutely. which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, it, uh, you know, I think this mo- games at that point in time. 98 99 uh, there was just beginning that shift from from games to to cinema you know there's there's a very very thin line now between video games and uh movies and that line is getting blurrier all the time especially now with uh, interactive stuff right coming up to the level of uh full blown 4K cinema quality yeah. i mean you can really get a an immersive experience that feels real back then, you know, I, I think that that was just starting to happen. They, they still weren't hiring big stars yeah. for, for voiceover roles. Like now today, I'm sure that if they do, you know, if they do a Chris Redfield, they're going to get a big name actor mm. yeah, or something. Um, or certainly, I mean, uh, certainly someone with much bigger credits than mine, someone like a Roger Craig Smith or, right. Or, um, who do a lot, a lot more than, than I've ever done. And then they, I'm assuming that they do more work that they do that, that those directors now would work with these actors much more uh, like they would with actors on screen. You know, they would do right. the, the story prep and character prep and all that stuff. Right. right. And now, now with mm-hmm. games, they also, um, a lot of the times the voice actors will also do like the motion capture because technology has gotten to that point. So they'll physically right. do the role too. Yeah, exactly. It's very true. Well, for having absolutely nothing, Joe, you did an amazing job with Chris. And like, (laughs) just, you know, I said this to Heidi too, like you guys made them like, I don't know. It's kind of like what you just said. You didn't want him to be like a superhero. You wanted him to be a real guy that's really going through stuff. And I love that because it's not just, you know, because, because Heidi, when she was on and we were talking to her, she said, you know, what do you really, what do you like about Jill Brandy as, as like a female? Was it like the female thing? And that's awesome. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's awesome to have a badass chick in a video game that just kicks ass. (laughs) Um, But I also loved how Heidi, it was something in her voice that also made Jill vulnerable at times. She wasn't just a badass. She also had emotions, like when her comrades are getting killed and when she's, you know, there's, and you had that too in, in your voice. There were certain times, especially with your dealings with Rebecca, like, like uh, Dylan was saying, it's like almost like a, a brotherly type of thing. I don't know if they even described Rebecca to you, like how she's supposed to be kind of like the weaker of the stars members and everything. But, and you know that now cause you've played zero and you've played the games, but like, I don't know. It's just like you guys came across as real people in these situations. And that's why you and, and Heidi's versions, and I, I'm not just saying this because you guys were nice enough to call. I, I like you guys are literally my favorite version of Chris and, and Jill, like oh, and remake my favorite game. So <laughs> thank you very much. You know, doesn't that make it more interesting? I, yes, I, definitely. I've said this before. I've said this before on other interviews, but uh, to me, the horror genre is pointless if you put a hero in the middle of it that's true if you're that not can handle anything yeah yeah if you know if you're not vulnerable if you're not mm-hmm. if you're if the character is not scared shitless to exactly be, <laughs> then what's the point then it's not horror you know yes. then it's just run and gun and who wants mm-hmm. to yeah and unfortunately i feel like the resident evil characters have sort of become that way as of late um i still love the right. series but i do feel like a spe- specifically chris and leon have really become you know guys yeah. that can you know flip off just motorcycles action while stars shooting. And... yeah it's like yeah it's a little that's... crazy now but no chris redfield it's... should never be arnold schwarzenegger exactly right. <laughs> punching boulders and stuff <laughs> i would rather see don knotts play chris redfield <laughs> <laughs> right I love I love Don Knotts. So <laughs> um, oh, come on. You don't think his tree trunk size biceps are realistic? <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, Chris definitely looked a little more natural, you know, 
yeah. right. before yeah. RE5. But... I did just want to go off on the how the newer characters have kind of devolved in one way or another right. than what they were, more human and all that. Um, sp- speaking of Chris and Jill, um, I don't know if you ever played this game because it's 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 canon but it's not the main series it doesn't have a number but it resident evil revelations mm-hmm. and brandy and i chris and jill specifically are very like cardboard in that they yes. they they're and nothing really against the actors that's how they were directed and even right. roger craig smith is in that game and he's he's a good chris but something about the way they were in that game was very muted yeah. and dull unfortunately there was, like, no chemistry uh... yeah yeah um I don't know what happened there. Uh, <laughs> I, I did play it, and uh, I, I don't even think I finished it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I think I got maybe halfway into it, and, and uh, meh. Mm. <laughs> the I meh story was... Out. On the... <laughs> I, yeah. I, I had fun with what it, but I, the, I, story the story was, was ugh, and, like really lacking. And Chris and Jill didn't seem like partners that have been partners for years that really cared about each other. Just kind of seemed like another mission and just, hey. like I, It was mm-hmm. very strange. Going from like yeah. the chemistry that you and Heidi have, and you know RE5, they, they, those actors had good chemistry, and then going to Revelations, it was like, what happened? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The the company, you know, Capcom at that point, I they were they were struggling with finding the the way to continue the series, and right, uh, you know, it was an experiment, and I I don't feel like it worked very well, right. and I think that they realized that as well. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know. And, by the fact that they've that they're trying to return to the to the genre a little bit more, but um, yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, it's, yeah. it's tough, but uh, I understand these guys are under tr- tremendous pressure to make money. Yeah, and so yeah. they're constantly second guessing. They're constantly trying to find what's the next thing that's going to be viral. They right. can't just keep going back and making you know the same thing over and over again. They have to uh, uh, to continue to evolve, but. Um, you know, it would, would have been nice if they had stuck with the original format for a couple more games. At least we would have had yes, you know, a little bit more stuff on the shelf with that vibe. I completely agree. I think the I for for me personally, I think the last really good Resident Evil game. I I still follow the series. I still love it, but I think the last really good one for me personally was RE4 because it still had it did change things up. It, it wasn't, you know, pre-rendered backgrounds and camera angles which I absolutely love and tank controls, but so it was like over the shoulder. It was starting to sort of, you know, step into the shooter thing a little bit, but it still yep. had that atmosphere. It was it, it had, you know, it has great music, has such a great soundtrack, amazing yep. voice acting. Leon wasn't over. I mean, he's really cool in that game. Don't get me wrong, he's pretty badass, but he's not, you know, <laughs> He's not no, like punching not boulders and yes, yeah, right. or yeah, exactly. So that and that was the last one, unfortunately, that Shinji Mikami was part of, and that also may be why I'm a little bit biased because Shinji is, is definitely that. Yeah, there, there, that's enough said right there. That Shinji, you know, that's why it was the last good one because it's the Bingo. last one Shinji right. worked on. Bingo, that's that's exactly. entirely true. Entirely true. Once you take out that that uh, creative vision, exactly. Uh, you know, it's gonna it's gonna morph into something um, entirely different. Exactly. Next, you know, so uh, and that's why I think, and four I think is my favorite game. It, I, yeah. The the thing that bothers me about four, I, I it took me a long time to get used to the camera. Right. Um, but once I did, once I embraced it, once my fingers got used to, you know, m- moving independently of each other, uh, <laughs> I I really enjoyed that game, and it it is the last game that has the vibe. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Like people can say what they want about it. It did change up the the franchise a little bit, but I think I think it was going in a new and 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 fresh direction. And I think if Shinji had stayed on, mm-hmm. we may have gotten more like four versus you know getting games like five. Five has a very good story. Five's very good with you know dealing with Chris and Jill and Wesker and everything. But then it got a little crazy towards the end, and it was you know I don't like it a horror game that takes place in the daylight. I also don't like Resident Evil games where <laughs> you know people are shooting at me. Like the, you know Resident Evil creatures never had weapons like, that was kind of exactly. like that's a little i mean at the end of four they kind of do that too so i can't completely you know say it was just five that did that but i mean four still again just has that atmosphere where it's just like it still feels like a horror game it still yes. feels like a resident evil game whereas right. the ones that came after it's like am i playing call of duty or did i put resident evil in? it's no. like mm. <laughs> oh that's very true and let me tell yeah. you something the, the thrill the shock the, yeah. the fear that i experienced in that early primitive game 
Mm -hmm. When the first time I played it and I walked down that long white hallway and those dogs jumped through that window. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, think about how simple the setup is. And it scared the poop out of me. I mean, it was, you know. (laughs) I know. Dylan and I always talk about that the simplicity of horror is like our favorite type of like you know just creeping down you know in in the mansion and remake just creeping down a hallway and not knowing what's going to be on the other side and hearing a zombie moan like slightly in the like that is scarier to me than somebody (laughs) jumping in my face and you know i'd rather have that eerie it's almost like you know the hair stands up on the back of your neck type thing that's the type of horror i like and resident evil used to be so good at doing that so good with atmosphere and so good with you know just that eerie feeling and i feel like they unfortunately doesn't really feel like that anymore but <laughs> yeah. i guess games have to evolve and change with the times but it's unfortunate because the the old games definitely still give me that vibe and no matter how many times i play them i play, i've played remake probably hundreds of times i'm such a nerd for that game yeah it still <laughs> it still can get me especially them damn crimson heads oh my god i have a heart attack when i hear one of them running at me yes yeah. <laughs> yeah, i did have another question um well actually brandy and i both had it kind of collectively together um, and now that you've said you've played all the games, um, what are your thoughts on, like, not necessarily his appearance, but, like, Chris and his, how, how he sort of, his later appearances, how do you feel about yeah. those, seeing as you've played him? Well, you know, um, he, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm l- actually doing a search on Chris, because I want to see all the pictures while I'm talking to this. <laughs> uh, you know, um. Chris, I, I think, has been the subject of uh, a lot of rent, a lot of uh, a lot of tension, a lot of pulling back and forth. Of you no, know, Chris Redfield is this kind of character. No, he's that kind of mm. character. No, he's mm-hmm. this. No, he's a tough guy. No, he's a real guy. Yeah. And the character designs have uh, have kind of shown that. Right. And uh, unfortunately, I think the trend today in and in the past in the past 10 years for, for uh, video game characters has been uh, something a little more than human. And mm. uh, so I've, I've seen the design of Chris Redfield go from, from regular guy to, to more of a superhero. I mean, um, and that, for, that's always problematic to me because the character that I created as Chris mm. is a real man is, is a guy who's able to be killed at any given moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, a, a man who has to deal with, you know, all of the all of the 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 struggles and the fear of being in that kind of a situation. Right. Which I mean, you're going to have PTSD after being in 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 the mansion. You know, I mean, it's going <laughs> yeah. to be unchanged from that. Yeah. Uh, unless you're a plastic Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> character without any <laughs> dimension or soul or memory or you know anything like this. Exactly. So I wish that they would just bring Chris back to being a regular guy, you know, mm-hmm. just, just an average police officer doing a job. Mm-hmm. Sure. He's sure. He's tough. Sure. He's, he's smart, mm-hmm. but, uh, but he's not a superhero. Exactly. Yeah. And I, that is, I completely that is what that. he, what he did turn into. Um, yeah. I mean, they gave him some interesting stuff in six, although it's very dramatic. He's like, very, yeah. he gets amnesia and he is is drunk and he gets drunk, it's yeah. and he's always angry in the whole game. So there's yeah. like, yeah, that's the other thing too. You know, is uh, uh, those are all very real things. I just mm. don't think they're right for Chris. Right. Right. No, I agree. I miss when he they when all the characters were more human like when you literally play a remake you feel like you're just walking in like obviously jill and chris are experienced and they're and they're tough but they're not like you said joe they're not superhero that they're still vulnerable human beings that can be killed so exactly it makes you more scared (laughs) once you take that factor out the game is a you know the game is no longer about the evil about the about the fear and the and the terror it's now it's about shooting things exactly and how badass can i be when i flip off this motorcycle and shoot a zombie dog. It's <laughs> a good name for a restaurant, isn't it? Zombie dogs. Zombie dogs. <laughs> We're going to open that up. <laughs> ah, that sounds awesome. Um, but Randy, did you want to ask him on this question, his thoughts on Chris's most recent appearance and how oh, he really doesn't seven. resemble himself? 
Yeah, so RE7, <laughs> and I know you said you liked it, Joe, but there's a lot of fans were a little disappointed in how Chris looked because he was basically <laughs> unrecognizable and nobody even knew it was Chris until Capcom right. came out and said, oh, yeah, it's Chris Redfield. And he he yeah. introduces himself as Redfield, like he's James Bond. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Redfield. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, they, <laughs> they took him to a place of, of uh, beyond, uh, just slightly beyond believability. Just yeah. slightly. But it, you know, at the same time, you're not going to. And also, where the heck was he all that time? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's you know? Not true. Yeah. And where where's Jill been? She hasn't been in the game in forever. They just like they don't I I don't know. That Leon's become sort of like the real popular like character ever since four and he's so great in four, don't get me wrong, I love Leon, but like they kinda overuse him a lot now and some other characters slip in the background which kinda sucks, but we'll see what mm-hmm. happens in Resident Evil eight if if they'll bring the characters back. Because that was one thing I personally didn't like about RE7. Like like you said, Joe, it didn't really have a tie to the original canon. I just didn't like that all the characters like were just like scrap. Like, the, none of them were in it. Like, yeah. to me, I want to play a Resident Evil game. I want to play as Chris, Claire, Jill, Leon, Rebecca, like, Ada. I want to play as those characters. Like, they're mm. they're what makes Resident Evil for me, personally. I yep. love the horror, too. The horror is a big part of Resident Evil, but what made it so special for me were these characters. So, like, to not have them, RE7 just kind of fell flat for me for that reason. I get it's a really good horror game, and it brought a lot of the the darkness back and the horror, but for me, it's like Resident Evil's always been more about the characters, but I guess it's a preference. Like, if you're more for the Absolutely. horror, you're more for the story. I, so. I agree. I agree. Yeah. You know, for me, it really is about the characters. Yeah. Uh, and it's about this particular set of characters in a particular type of situation. Exactly. You can't just mix and match. You can't pull them out and put them in a different format, and you can't also right. uh, make, you know, try to make something that that you're saying is the same thing without any of those characters and it doesn't make any sense. Exactly. I really do feel like Resident Evil 7 should have maybe just been like a spin-off or something. Like, I, I don't know. Absolutely. For me personally, it should have been, and I hope in Resident Evil 8 that they'll, Capcom will kind of realize that people still want to see these characters go. And there's always the excuse, well, you know, oh, Chris and Jill are getting older now. You know, they're in their 40s and they're going to have to retire soon from like the, the, the <laughs> and I'm like, no, they can make story. I mean, no, that's just a lame excuse so that they don't have to continue their stories and give them a good ending. Like, I don't know. I wish. I wish <laughs> I could play Chris Redfield again as oh. an as an older man. I mean, I wish that, that they That would be awesome. Do Chris, you know, maybe you know, fast forward 20 years in Chris's life and and he's at the end of his career and he's about to retire right. and something crazy happens and he has to go in and fight one more time. I think that would be fascinating. That would be awesome. And it'd be so fulfilling to actually have endings written for these characters. We've we've yes. grown up with these characters since the 90s. We love them. Like I don't want it to just be like, well, you know, they went in retirement and they're done. Like, I want to see that. I want to see, like, if Chris does have one last mission and then they want to have him retire, fine. But let me play that mission. Let him have a fulfilling ending. Let Absolutely. him be human again. <laughs> Make a call. Call Capcom right now. Call him. You're right. Call. I know. Dylan and I have better ideas than they do. Come on, <laughs> Shinji, Dylan. Oh, we've got a long, <laughs> yeah. we got a long list of things we want to say to Capcom. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and Shinji, Shinji Mikami has to direct it. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, my God, Joe. This is why we love you. <laughs> You're like so reading. A, we, oh my god, I would I would die for a Shinji directed Resident Evil game like a, in, of today. Like he could fix the series, <laughs> maybe. Uh, well, maybe if one of us wins the lottery, we can lure him out of retirement. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, I know you had someone who gave you a question, Brandy, that they wanted a shout out. Oh yeah. <laughs> And I almost <laughs> forgot she would have killed me. So, so, <laughs> yes. so if you don't mind, my sister Brittany, <laughs> okay. she loves Resident Evil as much as I do. We both grew up, you know, watching our dad play and everything. It's like a big family thing. Like Resident Evil is not just like a game. It's like a huge deal in my family. So okay. my sister Brittany wanted to, she asked a question, but she also wanted to know if you would give her a shout out. <laughs> you want me, I'll do it as Chris. Okay. <laughs> hey, Brittany. <laughs> this is Chris Redfield talking to you, Brittany. Uh, just trying to remind you to always stay safe. Always watch out for zombies. Yeah. Because they don't have your best interest at heart. In fact, they don't have hearts. They don't have hearts because they're dead. So, Brittany, you're not dead. So, stay alive. However you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yes. You're gonna 
you're gonna make her fangirl heart explode she's gonna love that (laughs) oh my god that was great that was bravo good performance (laughs) um well her question was do you feel that you can relate to chris in any way oh absolutely totally he is me Uh, you know it's it's, uh, and it's one of the reasons that i'm grateful for the fact that i was able to create chris out of whole cloth instead of being being given a lot of direction i mean i was given some i I, i'm assuming i don't remember it but right um I mean, Carol is a wonderful director, so I'm sure that she did. You know, you know, she probably came up with a lot of good stuff. And um, but I don't, be, I don't remember being given specific uh, ideas about how he was, who he was, how he was was supposed to be played, and whatnot. But um, wow. <clears throat> the uh, the thing is, I, I'm very happy to have been able to bring uh, my idea of what a hero is into this iconic game you right. know i don't believe that heroes are larger than life characters heroes happen by accident to people who are completely unprepared for whatever happens to them to happen to them right um you know it's um that to me makes for a real performance that for me make, makes a real character in a real situation uh even in the hyperinflated reality of a video game you still need that connection you need that humanity to uh, to pull you into the effect of the game. Without that humanity, uh, right. games are are um, they are much less um, they're much less visceral. They're they're right. Mm, you really don't get that that uh, physical sensation of being in a situation that you do when when you believe the characters. Right. I agree. I think that's why you know that. <laughs> I think if I'd gotten into Resident Evil later in life and I'd played like I played the later games first, say I would be like, oh, you know, this is a decent game. But I, the characters really wouldn't have struck me. It was when they were all like you're saying, like human, when they were all so portrayed as real people that were just in these horrible situations, like tough people, but not huh. invincible people. Right. And people you feel like you could have hung with these people. Exactly. Oh, exactly. That's <laughs> that's the thing. You feel like you could have been a part of this team because no one's yes. running in there going, I got this, guys. Right, you know, right, uh, right, right. Let's right. do this. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I'm I'm not going to hang out with that guy. I'm going to go. Okay, you go, you go ahead, and I'll, <laughs> I'll wait here in the lobby. Yeah. Um. You know, it's 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 the average person being forced to deal with this kind of a situation, and that's where real yeah. heroes come from. Right. You know, you ask any ask any army hero who, you know, survived some kind of a firefight and say, how did, you know, you, m- you must be a real hero. And they'll say, no, I got through a situation and I was right. lucky. Exactly. You know, I was scared shitless the entire time. Right. Um, that's what a real hero is. I agree. I yeah. completely agree. With you. All right. Well, um, <laughs> I think we are ready for Perfect. to do our little reunion. All Yay. right. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. Hello. Yay. Yes. Hey. <laughs> I was going, I wonder how come they're not calling. Oh. No. <laughs> so, all right. Hey. Jill, is that you? Jill, is that you? <laughs> Chris? <laughs> Chris, where have you been? Jill. I've been looking for you all over this mansion. I was attacked <laughs> by a, a huge snake. <laughs> You're not gonna, you're not gonna believe this shit that's gone on. <laughs> In twenty years. <laughs> oh oh my god. Hi Heidi. Hello. Have you guys been having a nice chat? Oh yeah. We have yes. yes. Oh good. Good. Oh. What an awesome intro that was, though. I didn't expect that. <laughs> for, just for you guys in your voices to call each other Chris and Jill, you just made my whole life. Right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hi. 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 <laughs> oh, Heidi, thank you, know, you so much for coming on. We were saying that to Joe, but thank you for doing this. You're the best. Oh, yes, my yes. pleasure. What fun. Yeah, this is one of those crazy things about doing voiceover is that, you know, uh, uh, Heidi, you and I were part of this. <clears throat> this thing yeah. uh, at the beginning that, of which I had no idea what it was going to become. 
Yeah. And and we never met. Well, I never met. I, <laughs> until all of these little reunions and podcasts and things started happening, I had never spoken to any of the other actors. Wow. You know, yeah. So yes. crazy. And that so connected. true. But you were, um, did they did Capcom do something with you? Do I remember something that they got some of the actors together? It was Crim- was it Crimson Head Elders podcast? Was it that one? Uh, Where they had they had like Barry's voice actor Ed Smar- Smarin. I don't Smarin. I don't want to say his name. Yeah, yeah. and then Peter yeah. Jessup. Yeah. And I, yeah, we did a thing, but we didn't do. Um, Capcom has you know the only thing that that we've done uh, officially for Capcom was um, there was one night where they had a big party. Oh, it was for the for the uh, relaunch. Yes, uh, that's it. That's uh, it. Right, and it was they had a big party at a place uh-huh. called Dirty Laundry in Hollywood, uh-huh. which is a very cool bar because it kind of feels like the inside of the Spencer Mansion. But, yeah. Oh, that's awesome! Wow. <laughs> and, <laughs> So Peter Jessup and I went to this event, and uh, I think I mentioned this to you, to you guys earlier. You know, we went to this um, this big party, and we walk in, and of course nobody knows who we are because we're voiceover actors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, but they, we find the person in charge, and they go, "Oh, oh yeah, we have some tables set up for you guys." And there were two tables uh, that they actually had to move back into the back of the building uh, <laughs> with our, our name tags on them. Oh. Absolutely. No one came up to us, oh, come said on. anything to. I'm so totally it was the saddest thing. Uh, but, but you know, after a while, we we just kind of looked at each other and went, "Well, you want a drink? Sure, okay." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, did you end up talking to anybody? There were there was a young guy and girl who were in cosplay as Chris and Jill. Awesome. And they came up and started talking to us. I think we actually had to mention, you know, I'm the voice of Chris Redfield. Oh, my gosh. And they were like, wow, really? You know, <laughs> because wow. as Capcom, as, as, a, as an event, they didn't do anything with us or for us. We were kind of hoping that they would it, have It's us. a little surprising, isn't it? Just a little yeah. bit. <laughs> no, I mean, because it's just been relaunched, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's, you would think they would just say, hey. Just let you know, this is great, thanks, you know, of some you know, sort. Some, something but, like that, but there yeah. has not been a single word. And, yeah. and of course, another thing that, the, that the, the fans don't know is when the game was re-released, nobody got paid. That's right. crazy. Yeah. That is right. crazy. You don't get repaid for, for the voice work that you did the first time. Yeah. But that's, I feel like that's so, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know anything about, you know, the industry, or right? but I just think that's right. kind of. That's kind but of we shaped. know <laughs> you and I know enough about Capcom, Brandy. Oh yeah. We follow them enough. We've never even worked for them, but but uh, we know how they. We can love be. these voice actors so much, and I think yeah. if Brandy and I were there, Joe. If your <laughs> yeah. name, yeah. your names was there. We knew you. We know your names. We've known your names for a long time. We would have walked oh. up and freaked out. I would have. Yeah. I would have literally like had a fangirl attack like right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's that's a it's a real gift. I mean, the um the love and support from the fans is just such a gift, and yes. uh, that's priceless. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know you guys both always say that. I love that because as as disrespectful as Capcom may be, just know that you guys are you guys are like you know how, who can I compare it to like the Jennifer Aniston and like who's a big who's a big actor Hugh Jackman of like the Resident Evil. <laughs> You guys are, you guys always guys say are that. a big deal. Yeah. You guys are a very big deal. Just know that. Yes. <laughs> like, to well, even I, be talking to you guys right now, I'm literally like, wow, is this real? <laughs> <laughs> well, it must be, I mean, I can equate, because I don't play games, but I could equate it to, you know, having a conversation with Elton John, who, you know, somebody oh. I spent a lot of my hours right. and sure. you know, years right. with. And uh, who I did meet, actually. But, oh, you um, met Elton John? I'm jealous. I, I love did. him. I saw him live like a couple years. Oh, my God. He's amazing. I love him. <laughs> was he still really great? Oh, my God. He was. He rocked for like three hours and did two encores. Wow. I know this is a Resident but, Evil podcast, but we have to talk about Elton John for a second. <laughs> He's so I was, um, I was a waitress in Bernie Toppin's restaurant. No kidding. Oh, my Seriously. God. Seriously. And it was just all I could do because, you know, I'm like, see Bernie Toppin on a regular basis. And I'm like, oh, um, 
So one time I just kind of let my fangirl slip and I said, (laughs) um, I said, oh, then this was before, you know, YouTube and before, you know, when you wanted to watch something, you had to wait for it to come on TV. And (laughs) and so I had waited all day in front of MTV to see an Elton John performance. And and so I kind of let that slip one Saturday night when uh, I was working at, at his restaurant and and he and he looked at me and he just kind of shook his head and he said, no, you didn't. And he walked away. And I was like, um, yes, I did. And you have no idea how much of a fan I am. of your, But I can't say that. I couldn't say that because I was Aww. working for him for so long. But anyway, so I guess, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, when you become so intimately familiar with the sound of somebody's voice. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you spend so much time with them, there, there's a familiarity that a person gets to yes. that voice. So I yes. understand. So. Well, I mean, and you guys also voice two of like the most iconic, like, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, make you guys feel weird or whatever, but you guys literally <laughs> did voice two of the most iconic video game characters in like ever not just within resident evil like chris and chris redfield and jill valentine are huge <laughs> like yeah. characters yes <laughs> that still blows my mind still blows my mind how lucky i was to have been at the studio that day that you know I, I i don't know um heidi if if you know the story of how i got the part but i no. my wife was the office manager at sound deluxe and i happened to be there visiting her one day and carol rougier was there and they said, can you voice match this uh, this original voice from this game called Resident Evil? And I went, okay, I'll give it a shot. Uh, and they gave me the part. <laughs> I, I didn't audition for the part of Chris Redfield. It just kind of got dropped in my lap. So I'm incredibly lucky wow. to have been wow. in the right place at the right time. That is, tr- that is lucky. And so were you an actor? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I had been acting for a long time. And I had actually done a lot of voiceover up to that point. Um, I was working at Disney Feature Animation as an artist and had done, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of hours of scratch dialogue on all of the films that I was on at Disney. Okay. Uh, You know, that's how I got my start in voiceover, was doing scratch at Disney while I was working there. Uh And then one of the directors said, hey, you know, Joe, you're really good at this. You should have an an agent. Why don't you call this friend of mine? Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Who, who was it? Who did he have you call? Steve Nybert. Okay. From uh, the, who is the principal at Imperium Seven, which is wow. my agency. Uh, wow. And I've been with them ever since, and you oh know. Oh my gosh. That is great. That is a great story. Yes, that is. <laughs> that, is a, that is a very lucky story. But um, and so, did you sound just like the the original Chris? Well, that was what they wanted me to do at first. They said, can you voice match this guy? Uh, um, what was his name? Filippowicz, I think was his last Oh, name. yeah, Michael. Oh, Michael yeah. Michael Yeah, yeah. Filippowicz or something. Yeah. And who, uh, who nobody seems to know anything about I- anymore. Um, I don't know if he disappeared or. He just stopped acting maybe. Or... Yeah, maybe. It's yeah. So I, I, I voice matched a, a little bit and then um, I, they started giving me some freedom to do some things. And I said, what about this? What about that? And after a while, after a couple of hours, they just said, you know, we like what you're doing naturally better uh, than voice matching. Go ahead and just, you know, take over, do what you feel is, is, is good for this. So uh, I kind of got some freedom to shape the concept of Chris in that, in that game. And I went for the, the average guy and I didn't want him to sound uh, like a superhero. Because yeah. is that what the the uh, original Chris sounded like? No, uh, the original Chris s- sounded um, more normal guy ish. Um, he just yeah. didn't. Uh, I I just think that some of the and I don't mean to say that I'm the world's best act, best actor. I'm certainly not. <laughs> um, but um, I think that there there just really wasn't enough. Um, sort of uh, dramatic aspect to his mm. uh I, I don't think he was a very experienced actor so mm. they were trying to up the quality a little bit and i i hope i upped it at least a little bit but um you did yeah. <laughs> i can say that <laughs> that's great that's a great story no i don't i don't remember hearing that so that's great yeah so lucky just just luck <laughs> 
I was wondering, Heidi, did they play you to match like a previous Jill actor or did they just say, here's the script and do your own thing type thing? Yeah, I didn't even know there was a a, a game before. Mm. Oh, okay. And maybe they told me and I don't remember, right. um, which is entirely right. possible, but <laughs> it was, I just got hired for um, how I did. So, yeah. Well, that's and awesome Carol, too. Yeah. Was Carol Ruggier the uh, the casting person you worked with, or the the booth director? I'm. I I can't say. I the way I remember it is that I read out of my agent's office. Oh that's wow. That's how I remember. But I again again uh, my memory's faulty, so I can't say for sure. That's really interesting. Wow. <laughs> that, that I don't have a memory? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. No. Good thing I'm, <laughs> I can get through that mansion because. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, oh, well, we do have some questions for you. We got a lot of questions from Twitter, um, okay. and we have some of our own too. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if. We kind of have it. We kind of have it planned this way. I don't know if you guys still wanted to. This would be after the questions. Um, do those couple scenes I sent you? Or sure. Oh, well, that's, what that's, do you oh, think? I would love to. Oh, okay, okay awesome. awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Well, we can do those after the, the questions. But I guess um, I'll start with this. This is a question Brandy and I had together. Um, I don't know if you two were ever aware of this, but Jill and Chris are often, it's called shipped. They're often, <laughs> people like that to think of them as a couple, right. um, which is not really canon in the games. Right. But I'm curious what your thoughts on that would be, if you think it would be something that would work or, you know, you, you like, <laughs> or, <laughs> or if you just see them as comrades, it's interesting even, um, George A. Romero wrote the script for the first Resident Evil movie, but it wasn't produced, and then they moved on. I owned that script because awesome. it was never made into a movie, and in that, he made them a couple as well. But I'm curious your guys' thoughts on that. What's their What's their ship name, Brandy? Oh, uh, what is it? Uh, cause it's Valenfield. Val Valenfield. <laughs> oh, Valenfield. I like that. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. I don't know. Oh, well... How do you feel about that, Heidi? <laughs> well, I will say that um, that scene at the end, you know, where we're uh, flying off into the sunset and I rest my head on your shoulder, yeah. that <laughs> says a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> that is. Because... Well, maybe. Yeah, there's that moment. But I think that I think what what really sets it up. As soon as we run into the mansion at the very beginning of the big beginning of the game. Yeah. And I say, Barry, where's Barry? And then we hear that gunshot, and I go something like, I'll go check it out. <laughs> and Jill goes, Chris, be careful. Oh. I think yes. right there, yes. right there, you yes. realize. Similarly, yes. similarly, at the beginning of Jill's game, when Chris is not there, <laughs> uh, the first thing she does is notice he's not there and go to run out the door uh -huh. where all the zombie it. dogs yeah. are. She doesn't yep. even care. She's and running out the door. Stop her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, that would be that would really say something because if he's just a, a, another soldier, she's got to deal with the mission. Correct. Right. 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 That's true. Actually, I never really thought it because I never saw them as a couple. I thought I was just like, oh yeah, they're they're partners. They care about each other, but. The more I think about it, yeah, maybe there is some chemistry there. There's Except, chemistry. Yeah. I, I have to say, Jill funny. has, you know, when I've um, seen some of the cutscenes, I've I've seen um, Jill be compassionate to others as well. Right. Yeah. So maybe. So it could just. Maybe be Jill gets in trouble for being compassionate. You know. <laughs> yeah. Tough enough, you know? yeah. <laughs> right. Jill has a lot of HR problems later on in the. Right. <laughs> she does. Maybe, <laughs> she had to be careful with Barry because he's married. <laughs> right. He's married. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. No, not good. <laughs> I think that Chris and Jill uh, have uh, a very strong friendship. 
I don't think that um, I think there's a, a, a very strong attraction, right. but I think that they're both professionals and that they have not allowed right. uh, a relationship to to fully bloom. Certainly right. it has not been. Uh, uh, what's the word? Um, the, consummated? Uh, consummated. <laughs> right? it, it has not been consummated. In any sense of the word. Um, but I think by the end of the, of the, of the game, certainly when she puts her head on his shoulder in the helicopter, I think that, uh, you know, they've, they've been through something that at, at the very least bond, bonds them together in the way that soldiers who've been through a battle are bonded. Right. Right. Um, yes. Yes. But so, you don't see generally male comrades you know or you know <laughs> unless there's some intimacy putting their head on somebody's shoulder you know unless right. it's a comedy wrong with that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> unless there's some kind of interest i think i think yeah i mean there's even a picture if you beat the game a bunch of times the remake of the, the first game um if you beat it um i think if you beat it on uh there's a mode called real survival which makes the game a lot lot harder it's like the hardest mode of the game you mm-hmm. get a picture of Jill and Chris at the end. It says, uh, do you know what I'm talking about, Dylan? It says, like, congratulate. And there's a picture of yeah, yeah, Jill and Chris. And Chris is wearing Shinji. yeah, and the message from Shinji. But Chris is, like, wearing Jill's uh, beret. And, like, she has her arms around him in the picture. And it's, like, this really cute, oh. like, fun-looking picture. Like, no so kidding. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, that really does say something, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's yes. very cute. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I think after the after surviving this mission, they probably get together. They probably hooked up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I'm curious, your if you either of you have seen the live action Resident Evil movies, and if you your your thoughts on the actors that play Chris and Jill. I can answer quickly on my end. <laughs> I, I, I I haven't. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I I saw the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember that much about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> I I keep meaning to watch them again, but I haven't gotten around to it. Well, you oh, guys get, aren't missing much. They get progressively worse. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <they really> do. <laughs> I have but, um, to say, I had you know because as you guys know, I didn't know about uh, the popularity of the game nor mm-hmm. how popular Jill Valentine was or anything. And I remember walking past a movie poster going, oh, I was in that game. <laughs> <laughs> you know? right. I love that. I was in that game years ago, that little game. Yeah. And then lo and that... behold, it's this huge thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and never even did it cross my mind. Oh, I wonder, you know, right. this whole yeah. universe, a fan universe. I, knew, I mean, I don't think there yeah. were fan universes like this. Um, right. Mm-hmm. No, there weren't. I was completely shocked when when Paul Freshwater called me out of the blue and and said, "Hey, Joe, we'd like to talk to you about you know you being Chris Redfield in this in this video game that you did 20 years ago." And <laughs> mm-hmm. I was fully shocked. Fully shocked. Yeah, yeah, me too. I was like, "What?" Oh, I love that. I love how both of you guys are just genuinely surprised by just how big it really is. <laughs> yeah, completely. <laughs> It makes me happy, though. I, you know, it's uh, it's um, as uh, as a performer, it's it's always nice to be recognized for something that you did, even right. You know, mm-hmm. so it it really makes me happy that people are willing to listen to a, listen listen to me flap my gums for a little while. <laughs> right. Yes, and um, I was uh, okay. So and and I pull it out every now and again. Um, to impress people because like <laughs> I'll be at a party with some very like famous people and I'm like they have you know and I'll be like oh yeah oh I was Jill Valentine and they're like what <laughs> I'm like, blow their mind. Yes, yes I was and so um yeah yeah oh, I'm really great. I'm proud of it and now that I know that it was such a hit I am really <laughs> proud of it and I brag at every opportunity Oh, you guys deserve it. You guys have bragging rights for the rest of your life. You were in the like, greatest video game ever. <laughs> I love that. Oh my well, God. Well, yeah, before my life we... in 1998. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> before we do jump into the Twitter questions, I did just want to say the feeling is definitely mutual for me and Brandy. It makes us really happy that we get to yes. talk to you guys and that you're 
you agreed to come talk to us. It's really, really awesome. Yes, Aww. of course. You guys are great. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me don't make me blush or, or get yeah. like yeah. <laughs> um okay, well, because there are so many questions, we're gonna try to go through them quickly. But these are these questions are for both both of you guys. Okay. Um and so the first mm-hmm. one is from Brad Vickers on Twitter. Um and he asks, uh, what was your what was your experience like working on the game? Um, have either of you been a fan of the series? And if you were offered the role of Jill Valentine or Chris Redfield in a future Resident Evil project, would you take it? So I guess, yeah, the first one is what was your experience like working on the game? That the question I was looking at is a similar question about if 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 Heidi, you were asked to return for the RE3 remake, should that happen? Would you? And that question was by Jacob from Twitter. Just lumped them together. Yeah. Um, so I will step in and say, yes, I would. I would be thrilled. Awesome. And, um, and it would be a, a really amazing experience, especially knowing now um, about how popular it is and how great the fans are and how supportive the fans have been to me. And so I would just be honored uh, to be a part of it. And uh, my experience with um, with doing the role all those years ago was really positive. It was very artistic. It was very creative. And it was a true collaboration between me and the director because I was going off in a completely different direction and he was bringing me back and saying, nope, you've got to be tougher. You've got to, and I'd be like, okay, you know, and so we really worked together. And so that was uh, very rewarding for me. That's amazing. Our, Our experiences were so different. (laughs) <laughs> I, just, I, didn't have, I didn't have i mean i i had carol was sitting in the booth uh, you know we we actually went over this um uh, uh, quite a while ago speaking with uh, but before you came on heidi mm-hmm. yeah. um, you know uh carol would interpret what the what shinji was saying in the booth uh and she would give me his direction on what you know what a give and take was but there was really no uh there was no discussion artistically about who chris was or you know mm-hmm. uh, they just kept saying they would give me a line uh, or i would have a line on the page and i would do it and they would say okay can you try it a little bit more this way okay mm-hmm. do that but there was really it was so my memory of it was that uh it was very hands off it was it was there was really not a lot of connection between me and them and it, you know carol was really the director of the thing she's the one who who uh gave me notes uh in the booth on what was happening and you know maybe try it this way joe or 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 whatever so it was really um my experience with with the process was strictly through carol Mm-hmm. So were you, did somebody else get hired for this game and then you replaced that person? No, I replaced the uh, the guy from the original version of, of uh, Resident Evil. Huh. I'm, there was that, you know, there was RE1, which is the huh? the original game. And yeah. uh, that was what they remade. <clears throat> and so, yeah, no, it was just, they, they gave me some some clips of him doing his parts and then they mm-hmm. said Can you voice match it and then after a while they just said go ahead and do your own thing mm-hmm. that's interesting because um that they were like we that your character in particular they wanted to voice match and um the other act i mean at least in my experience um it was just act you know so yeah. interesting yeah. very interesting yeah that's weird that they didn't play anything for you, though, Heidi, because I want to say that when I heard a Peter Jessup interview who who did uh, Wesker in the remake, he I thought he said that they played Richard Waugh, who had previously voiced Wesker, mm-hmm. and they played it. They played Richard Waugh for him, and then they played, obviously, the previous Chris one for Joe, so I'm surprised they didn't play any previous Jill for you, or maybe they just wanted a newer, like, fresh voice for Jill, and they didn't want to compare it to the original. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting to know. <laughs> Well, if it was anybody, um, it would have probably been Catherine Disher. She yeah, the one who's Jill RE3. Prior to you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wait, Joe, you didn't answer if you were offered the role, which oh. I'm sure oh. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> oh, in a heartbeat. In a yes. heartbeat. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I, I wish Capcom would 
pull their heads out of their you know what (laughs) (laughs) be interesting to see what they do yeah Mm. (laughs) would be well Um, i was saying earlier heidi that i would like to do an older chris redfield oh it's 20 years later he's just about to retire but he has to go (laughs) back in to do one last you know crazy mission yeah Mission before he uh, before he retires. I, w- I would love to do a, a story like that. So as opposed to characters who've just um, been you know stayed the same age all these years, hey, yeah, they've actually exactly. aged along with with the game. Or Isn't that the fantastic? Year. I mean, there could be younger characters in it as well. Maybe Chris mm-hmm. and Jill are now training younger stars. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, pitch that to Capcom, Joe. That's a perfect <laughs> idea. That sounds the like younger an awesome stars game. members go in and they they, they never hear they. They they don't hear from them, so the so Jill and Chris have to go back in. There yeah. Even That's though the mansion was blown up. <laughs> Even though the mansion was blown up. Oh my god. But you two have to voice uh Jill and Chris. That's the rule. Like it has That's to be you guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. Deal. It writes itself. Come on. Um <laughs> Well, I have um she wrote she wrote a bunch i'm gonna pick a couple of them but i believe um i believe you've probably both talked to her before the oracle dragon from crimson head elder she sent us some questions and i picked the most interesting ones this one um this one she said is for joe but i guess you could both answer it if you were in the mansion what would be your first task to do (laughs) interesting Oh boy! As <laughs> a mansion, find ammunition. Um, That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, the first thing we would do. Are they talking uh, in what I would do in real life, or what? what yeah, the- I think so. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'd probably crawl inside one of those big vases in the front of the <laughs> and just stay I'm there just until waiting. someone comes to get me. Oh, my God. I always said that I would just stay in the main hall because the main hall, for the most part, in the mansion is always safe. So I would just sit there on those steps and wait for somebody to come rescue me. That's me. I would be so scared. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, there's, there's no way I would go exploring around that <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Oh no. I the first time I saw uh Jill go marching off on her own, I was like, Oh my gosh, I would never do that. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. But what you all maybe don't know is that inside my hat, like Winnie the Pooh, I carry a sandwich. Oh, of course. So I would be sure I was well fed before with my Jill sandwich before I moved on. Go go (laughs) sit in the dining room and and take a little break and have your sandwich. Yeah. I had the strength to continue. I want to get a t-shirt that says I was almost a Jill sandwich. Oh, my God. You could probably get them anywhere, like on Amazon. I bet you they. That's like the most famous line from Resident Evil. (laughs) It is great. Well. On Jill's sandwich, the, another short, fun question Oracle Dragon had was, uh, Heidi, has anyone in real life jokingly said Jill sandwich to you? <laughs> no. <gasps> what? No. Come on. <laughs> no. No, never. <laughs> well, interesting. It's because, uh, like, like Joe said, people don't recognize, recognize us. Right. You know, right. so I'm I'm sure if like my face was on the back of those games, right, <laughs> that m- might have happened. But but your mm-hmm. voices are so recognizable. Maybe because Dylan and I have played the game so many times, so maybe we just you know. But I hear you and I hear Jill and I hear Joe and I hear Chris and like I'm sure if I heard Peter Jessup, I'd hear Wesker. It's like you guys are very, you know. I just hear it, so I don't know how people wouldn't know. Like, as soon as you open your mouth, I'm like, hey, were you Joe Valentine? <laughs> like, it w- I would just hear it. <laughs> no. No, that never happens, ever. Oh. Well, for me, also, you know, people don't see me in context of as an actor. They see right. me as someone who works in animation as an artist. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah. usually, like, when I started working at um, Disney Publishing a couple of years after I left Feature Animation... Uh, we, you know, they have the the first meet and greet meeting where you meet everybody else in the department. And there's probably, you know, 40 or 50 people at this meeting and they have you as the new person stand up and say something that no one would know about you. Fun mm-hmm. little, 
So I stood up and I said, um, uh, something that nobody knows about me is that I was the voice of Chris Redfield in Resident Evil, the remake. Oh, that's awesome. And <laughs> like four people in the room jumped up, screamed, <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, and were just, you know, it was instant fan moment. Uh, I love that. But right out of the blue. In fact, I ended up giving, I had a bunch of Resident Evil um, stuff, like uh, I had a little cardboard standee of Chris Oh my gosh, uh, in that position so awesome. <laughs> from a, from a from a video store that uh, I went in and saw that thing and I said to the guy working at the counter you know I I did the voice for that character and he said oh here you want this so I took, <laughs> really that's I great ended, I ended up giving all this stuff to this girl who was just insane for the for the game because <laughs> I was like I don't know, it's in a box in my garage here you want this so I signed it for her and gave it to her and, and she was just blown away. It's, yeah, it's, it's I, I, I love that because it's just to me it's like I grew up with these games they mean so much to me I love them and for the, for you two who were in the game just like to just not even realize until like recently obviously that how big it was it's just crazy to me it's just because like they've always just been a part of my life and I just I love all the games I've, I've grown up with them it's just like and then for you guys it's just like you guys get these reactions and you're probably like what like when you guys first started to get the reactions were you like what the heck like when when yes. when you say i'm jill valentine or i'm chris redfield and people are like what the hell were you guys like whoa <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah it, that, it was a real surprise but like i said now that i know <laughs> i love to brag about it exactly <laughs> Now I want to plug it, you know. Now that I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, increase my my digital presence and and uh, build up my brand and and do more voiceover work. At this point in my life, uh, I want to I want to um, what's the word? I want to uh, utilize the utilize right. the things yeah. that on 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 this um, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Brandy and I know full well that you guys have a, like a lot of support in that way. As far as the people that want yes. to talk to you, they will support you and whatever you're going to do in the future, 100, percent right. and yes. like help you <laughs> spread that out there. And there are so many fans, please believe this, that would love for you guys to come back as Chris and Jill. And obviously, it's it's unfortunately not up to you or the fans at all. It's up to Capcom. But like, there are so many people that are like, why did they ever get replaced to begin with? Because it's like you guys did it so good. So, oh. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I could say I could do it all day. I'll just sit here and just tell you guys how great you are. Can we just? Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Wait, let me get a drink first. I'll be right. Okay. Yes. Um. Well, what, what are we doing here, Heidi? Are we gonna read together? You want to do some? You want to? Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I gotta put my my reading glasses on. I love hearing you say oh. that in Chris's voice. That's awesome. <laughs> I have to put my reading glasses on. <laughs> that can come in when you when you come back to play him as an older guy. That's great. Yeah, you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so three minutes to detonation. That one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Brandy, you go three minutes of detonation, and I'll be Barry. Where? Oh, oh okay, I'll say that. <laughs> wait, I don't know where the. Wait, did you actually send it though, Dylan? Just okay, say oh, three minutes. To, that's all you have to say. Oh, you're now? the computer. If they're ready to start. All right, whenever you guys are ready. <laughs> yes, ready. Okay. 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 Go. Three minutes to detonation. <laughs> okay, and then you hear the hunter screech in the background. Damn it, we're almost there. Jill, you just get in contact with Brad. No. We can make it, Jill. Ladies first. Chris. Would you let me have my moments too? All right. <laughs> we'll rendezvous at the heliport. Jill, that was do awesome. that again? <laughs> that was can we awesome. do a take two? <laughs> a take two. Uh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Wait, are we starting over? Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Um, three minutes to detonation. Damn it, we're almost there. Jill, you just get in contact with Brad. No. We can make it. Jill, ladies first. Chris. Would you let me have my moments too? All right. We'll rendezvous at the heliport. 
That wasn't right. That did not sound right. What? <laughs> it did. <laughs> and uh, maybe let's see. Will you let me have my moments too? All right. Oh, we'll need with the heliport. All right. Okay. Let's try. Can we try a third? Yeah. Sure. This sure. Is fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. All right. Well, Dylan, you you be the lady this time, and I'll be oh, I'll be buried. Okay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay. Three minutes to detonation. Damn it, we're almost there. Jill, you just get in contact with Brad. No! We can make it. Jill, ladies first. Chris. Would you let me have my moments too? All right. We'll rendezvous at the heliport. Woo! <laughs> I three love the charms. <laughs> yes, I can, yes, I can so see the characters in my head when you guys talk. I love this. <laughs> this is like the best. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Cool. That's awesome. Let's do the second one. Oh yeah, I see the second one. Like, the second one's really short, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it would be just you two. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Jill? Chris? You're okay. Chris, it's Wesker. He I know. But first, let's get out of here. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna die over. That was Vanguard. great. That was so awesome. <laughs> like, how do you guys do that? You even, like, do, like, the, the, the breathing. Like, you just get so into it. And, like, I can tell in your voices. Like, I don't I don't get it. It's awesome. <laughs> that talent. The, the magic of acting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's so awesome. Well, thank All you guys right. so much for doing that. I, that was awesome. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't remember the scene, so it really helped that you guys sent the videos. Yes, I wanted oh, to do that, too. Oh, yeah. So you could see, like. Because in that scene, I think you guys just did the last one. They actually, uh, Chris and Jill hug each other in that one. Is that yes. the one I'm sent? Yeah. Oh. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see that. I didn't catch that part. Oh, yeah. Cool. She, like, uh, opens Jill. the cell that Wesker Chris. put him in. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, there's the hug. There's the hug. <laughs> yeah, the something's hug. happening between these two. Yeah, definitely. Something <laughs> I love that. You yes, guys something ever, like... there. Listen, so, that you guys are on to something. There is something <laughs> going on between these two. Chemistry's <laughs> <laughs> there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you guys ever like not like listening to your voice? So, like, if you watch the cutscenes in remake, are you like, oh, that's weird, that's me, or is it just like, eh, that's me, that's fine? <laughs> no, it was what it was. I, I, there are, there's stuff I would like to go back and re-record. <laughs> right. Right. Well, like those scenes are really good examples of how we were recorded separately, because if we were able to hear each other and respond off each other, it would have been, um, you know, different scenes for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I mean, just kind of in keeping with what I've said before, um, when I see the cut scenes and I hear my voice, I'm like, Oh, look at that. (laughs) (laughs) Look at that. That, You know, and it's really fun. It's fun for me. And because it's been so long since I did it and I don't remember, you know, I'm surprised with what happens in the story. So that's that's really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Jill Sandwich on Mm -hmm. Twitter said, Heidi, what would you change about Jill if you could and why? Mm, Interesting. Oh, geez. I think... I think I I can't address the question because I don't know enough to right. give an educated answer, and you guys know far more than I do. Um, so you know, I I really couldn't give uh, Jill Sandwich a, an educated answer. So um, okay, yeah. Well, I guess Brandy, if you wanted to just pick uh, one of the ones left that you have, I know what I would change. Oh yes, what? absolutely nothing. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good yeah. answer. <laughs> she's she's an iconic character. That's so great. Yeah. Um. Well, this one is for both of you, and this is this will be the last one I'll ask. So if we didn't get to your Twitter questions, I'm so sorry, guys. We've just been you know talking, having a conversation. But this yes. is from Josh. Um. He's actually a good friend of Dylan and I's. He's been on our podcast before. Um. And he asks to both of you. Um. I think Joe, you did answer this a little bit, but did you guys have prior knowledge of the of the series before you know landing the role? And then if you did. Was it a little daunting um, knowing you were taking over characters that had previous voice actors? Um, so I knew nothing. 
I knew I nothing. And I knew nothing until recently, you know, until two years ago. Um, That's correct. About even the popularity of the game, period. So I would say that if I were to be hired again, then it would be daunting. Right. But it was it was not daunting at all back then. And video games weren't that big of a deal back then. Right. Right. I concur. Uh, everything everything mm-hmm. Heidi said. Yep. Same thing. Yeah. Awesome. It's not really a question. Well, it's a cheeky <laughs> question from, from I assume, Paul at Crimson Head Elder. He wrote yeah. a long message, very nice. And at the end, he asked if they could get a little Chris and Jill reunion chat sometime. <laughs> On Crimson Head Elder. Well, of course. I'm always <laughs> Yes, we love them. <laughs> awesome. Crimson Head's been very good to both of us, I think. Absolutely. So, yep. Yeah. Just as awesome. you guys have been to us as well, and we appreciate. I appreciate that. Yeah. I consider awesome. Paul a good friend now. I, I can't wait. So one of these days, I'm going to London. We're going to go to a. We're going to go to a uh, Tottenham Hotspur game together. I can't wait. Oh, that's awesome! Oh, fun! <laughs> that's awesome. Um, Well, I guess to completely wrap up the very last question we have for you guys from Dylan and I, and I'm sure other people out there would like to know, do you guys have any upcoming projects that you would like to tell us about? So um, I've been working on, well, I wrote a book and so Mm -hmm. I've been working really hard at promoting it. Did you read it? Mm -hmm. A little while ago. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Dylan. Okay. Would you please post a review? Please. Sure. <laughs> oh my gosh, I need them on Amazon so badly mm. because, especially as an independent author, uh, reviews are very difficult to get, and they're so important to the success right. of the book. And so, what I'm working on now is um, doing, uh, getting together staged readings of mm. a scripted adaptation of the story. Oh, to, cool. um, and we just did it last January here in uh, Los Angeles, and it was so successful. It was a really wow. Um, incredible event. We had a standing ovation. And then wow. afterward, there was a panel discussion and a neuroscientist and schizophrenia researcher from Maryland came, flew out um, and was a part of our panel. I was so honored. She's um, a lot of her work uh, has been published and is very influential in the field. So I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Uh, I wrote <laughs> a book about um, my brother's true life experiences as a homeless drug addict with schizophrenia who went to jail 18 times. And wow. to make the story interesting to young people. We wrote it half fiction, half nonfiction, so that we could give it a plot and so that people would get lost in the story. And mm-hmm. then at the end, that's where the um, the message is clearly conveyed. And so um, it works very well as a theatrical piece. And so um, I'm working on bringing it around and I have some um, serious interest right now so I'm I'm awesome. not going to jinx it but um, mm-hmm. it, it's really really good so it's something that uh, I'm um, really pleased to be doing and hope to institute change because teen substance use is not harmless and can have lifelong consequences and everybody mm-hmm. needs to know yes. so that's, well, that's my great. project what's the book awesome. called it's called a night in jail and I have a website, a nightinjail.com. And there's all kinds of information there that um, has a lot of uh, scientific research under the menu page, uh, menu item research. And under the blog reviews, you can see pictures from the staged reading that we did and other things. Quentin Flynn, who is a famous voiceover actor, uh, voiced the audio book. And oh, he's wow. amazing in it. Yeah, yeah. So... I mean, it's so good. Um, can I you love- get it on Amazon? Can I get it like um, through the if there's an audio book, can you get it through Audible, which is like the Amazon mm-hmm. audio book app? Because I kind of mm-hmm. I use that a lot. Yeah, yes. we, I, I yeah, yes. do, do that. that. Yeah. Yes, you can. And awesome. you can get it on Amazon or Audible. And if you want to do one of those free subscription things, um, mm-hmm. message me through the contact me page on A Night in Jail. And um, I can send out uh, to anyone, and this is to anyone who needs it out in the right. universe, I can send you a link that will get you um, a free, you know, month to Audible or, you know. Awesome. So. Actually, yeah. I'm, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I, I actually, I think I have some credits that I haven't spent yet. I, I listen to Audible stuff all the time. 
Oh, great. Yes. Let me know. And then also, and if you like it or if you don't like it, you know, post a review and let us know. And um, it, it really does help us an awful, awful lot. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wish I could say I had something as um, audible <laughs> and and uh, kind of uh, uh, worthwhile to the to the rest of the planet. But I I um. I have a couple of movies coming out um, right now on the Adams Family. Oh, uh, really? The, oh, you do? And, Are you a voice? Uh, oh no, actually, I'm I'm just uh, I'm doing some uh, 3D modeling work on it, modeling and texture work. Oh, nice. Uh, that's what I do for my day job, and mm-hmm. then I'm also working on a movie called Extinct here at Cinesite. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I guess the the most important thing is is I'm doing stand up now, and uh, really. Uh, yeah, and that's awesome. Trying to, uh, you know, I've been doing it for about a year and a half, mm-hmm. and uh, getting better at it. Um, wow. had a, if you go to my, um, if you go to Joe White Comedy on on uh, YouTube, you can find my my channel. I only have one video up there so far of a, a show that I did at the Ice House in Pasadena in wow. March. And, oh, nice. Uh, Tomorrow night, Monday night, I'm doing a show, uh, just a, a, an open mic here in Montreal at a place called the Comedy Nest, mm. uh, which is a great comedy club here in Montreal. And uh, we'll be doing that tomorrow night. So we'll be putting some fresh video up of me making Canadians laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for those of you who don't know, Montreal is um, has hosts a, a comedy festival. Yes. Don't they? They're big for for that. Just for laughs, and that's, that's coming awesome. up in July, I believe. Uh, I'm nowhere near ready for for that <laughs> level of, uh, <laughs> of event. Maybe in a year or two, hopefully things go up. What was your YouTube called? Is it? Jo- it's just uh, Joe White, or is it Joe White Comedy? Joe White Comedy. Okay, I'm gonna have to okay. subscribe yeah. and find it. <laughs> Please, All right, well, yeah. Brandy, well, do you... all right, you guys. It was so nice talking to you. Thank you for having yes. me on. Thank you for letting me join in, Joe. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> well, Brandy and I have taken the hashtag from Allison Court, who voices Claire Redfield and did it for a long time. Yes. Performance matters when she was replaced. Yes. Um, voice actors, and especially in Resident Evil to us, is mm-hmm. so important, mm-hmm. but it's not. Doesn't seem like it's always important to Capcom because they recast so much. Yeah. Um, I just want to end this by saying that performance matters, and you guys delivered a great one. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. I second that. <laughs> that that means a lot to me. Yes. Yeah, it means a lot to me too. Awesome. So, well, okay, thank you so much, guys. guys. Yes, yeah, seriously, thank you. You guys were awesome, and thank you for taking time, especially Joe talking for to us for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Great conversation, and I hope we can do it again in the future. You guys are awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. you guys are really fun to talk to. So, <laughs> oh, so that's easy. That's good. <laughs> easy. Anytime. Anytime. All right, awesome. Well, you know, and uh, I think uh, uh, Heidi, we should probably learn the entire script and and perform live yes <laughs> oh my god Man, oh, die. Oh my <laughs> that would be that would be such a performance piece <laughs> oh i would love it oh my god that's hilarious that's not a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you guys got to do your homework okay. then. Look up All the right. Resident Evil remake, remake uh, cutscenes on YouTube and just practice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Take care. All Take right. Care, bye, Heidi. guys. Bye. Bye, bye. bye Joe. Bye-bye. <laughs>